Have you ever imagined, what if one day you vanish from everyone's sight? No one could see you anymore. No more explaining why you're late for work. No more getting caught sneaking around. Invisibility, a power almost everyone has dreamed of. Sounds amazing, right? You could sneak into movie theaters for free, prank your friends without getting caught, or even pull off some daring heists. But trust me, it's nothing more than a sweet illusion. In reality, if you were truly invisible, it would be a nightmare, one far scarier than any horror movie. Here's why. To see the world, our eyes need light to enter and reflect onto our retinas. But if your body were completely transparent, light would pass straight through you and your eyes wouldn't receive anything. Meaning, you'd become invisible to others and completely blind to yourself. In a less tragic case, if your eyes could still absorb light while the rest of you stayed invisible, congratulations, you'd just become a pair of floating eyeballs. And trust me, that's more terrifying than cool. It gets worse. To be truly invisible, you'd have to abandon your clothes, shoes, and anything you carry because normal objects don't turn invisible with you. So you'd be wandering around in full-on public Adam and Eve mode. No vags, no phones, no snacks. Invisible, but extremely inconvenient. And the misery doesn't stop there. People can't see you, which means they can bump straight into you at any time. And if you think about using this power to rob banks or escape prison, welcome to the dumbest criminal of the century. Thermal cameras and infrared sensors can still detect your warm 37 degrees Celsius body. Even invisible people still glow on security screens. In short, Invisibility might be a dream in your head, but if it ever became real, it would feel more like a punishment. Lonely, inconvenient, and dangerous. This superpower might make you a legend in imagination, but in the real world, you'd be nothing more than a walking accident. In the previous part, we saw invisibility turn dreams into nightmares, but imagine a power that's way more badass. Not to disappear, but to pass through any object. No keys, no locked doors, no wall can stop you. Sounds epic already, right? Picture this. You stand in front of a bank, security cameras sweeping, guards with guns watching. With this power, you just step straight through the thick steel wall effortless, silent, like a true ghost. Or simpler, you want to get to the fridge at midnight, no need to open the door. You just walk right through. Sounds incredibly convenient, doesn't it? But the harsh truth is, if this power really existed, the first one to get hurt would be you. And the tragedy would come faster than you think. The problem is this. Intangibility doesn't discriminate. It not only lets you pass through a wall, it can also make the ground beneath your feet vanish. And when that happens, nothing holds you up anymore. You fall straight down. Think about it. Each time you activate the power, Gravity no longer has anything to hang on to beneath your feet. You fall through them as though falling through air. And once you're falling, the only question left is, where will you stop? Suppose you panic and hurriedly switch the power off to stop. The scenario becomes even worse. Part of your body will end up fused into concrete, steel, or rock. Imagine your lungs trapped inside a block of solid concrete, no air left, and you slowly suffocate. This isn't sci-fi, it's a slow, excruciating death. And if you don't dare turn the power off, you'll keep falling forever. Topsoil, bedrock, groundwater deeper into the earth. Your body sinks with no end in sight, stretching for thousands of kilometers until you reach the Earth's core, where magma boils at temperatures above 5,000 degrees Celsius. Even then, your power can't save you you'd be roasted alive in a sea of hellish fire. Phasing through things in imagination symbolizes absolute freedom, no wall can hold you. But in reality, that very ability turns the world into a vast trap where there's nowhere to stand. It turns out that what seems like limitless freedom is actually a sentence with no escape. Imagine a perfectly ordinary morning. You oversleep, the alarm goes off, but you hit snooze. Now there are only 10 minutes left before the most important job interview of your life. Anyone else would panic, but not you. 
because you have super speed. With just a few strides, you could cross the entire city in a blink. Traffic, red lights, rush hour, none of it matters. You could even swing by a supermarket, grab a coffee, and still arrive right on time like a god. And if you wanted, you could run around the earth just to catch up with the Sunday. Sounds like a dream, right? But wait. The brutal truth is, the moment you start running, you've already signed your own death warrant. And here's why. Our bodies evolved to run at maybe 40 kilometers per hour, like an Olympic sprinter, but you want to run like a race car, a jet plane, or even faster than sound? At that speed, the forces on your knees, bones, and spine would multiply hundreds, thousands of times. The result? After just a few steps, your legs would shatter, tendons would rip apart. You might think of air as empty space, but in reality, it's filled with oxygen molecules, nitrogen, and countless specks of dust. At supersonic speeds, every dust particle becomes a bullet, billions of tiny projectiles slamming into your skin, your eyes, your face. And that's not all. Friction with the air generates tremendous heat. Fighter jets flying at supersonic speeds need special heat-resistant coatings just to avoid melting. You? You'd ignite into a living torch the moment you broke the sound barrier. Even if your body somehow didn't rip apart, you face another issue, vision. The human eye simply cannot process images when everything is flashing past in microseconds. All you'd see are blurred streaks. Forget about dodging obstacles your brain can't process that fast. A single lamppost, a truck, or even a pedestrian would instantly turn into a death wall. You wouldn't just destroy yourself, you'd create a disaster for everything around you. Let's suppose you actually adapted. Your brain speeds up along with your body. The whole city becomes a frozen tableau, while you wander alone in another dimension of time. In that moment, super speed stops being freedom and becomes a prison. You keep running, endlessly, but can never escape the loneliness. Every step at super speed consumes an astronomical number of calories. If you ran at flash level velocity, you'd need to eat as much food as an entire basketball team in a single meal. Can't eat fast enough? Your body collapses from exhaustion and self-destruction. In other words, you're not the flash, you're just a miserable human forever starving and broke from trying to buy food. Super speed sounds like a divine gift, outrunning time, breaking every limit. But in reality, it's a double-edged sword, turning you into a burning torch, turning the world into a prison of frozen time, and turning you into an eternally starving soul. Maybe we weren't meant to run faster than light. Maybe what we really need is to slow down, see each moment clearly, and savor the journey. Because the most beautiful thing isn't how fast you get there, but how fully you live every step along the way. Have you ever wished, just close your eyes and bam, you could appear anywhere in the world? No more traffic, no more being late, no passports, no planes. With a single blink, you could sip coffee in Paris and still be home in time for dinner. But if it ever truly existed, it wouldn't be a dream at all. It could be the worst nightmare of your life. The Earth doesn't sit still. It spins at over 1,600 kilometers per hour on its axis, hurdles around the sun at more than 100,000 kilometers per hour, and the entire solar system itself is racing through the galaxy. That means, if you want to teleport, you'd have to calculate the exact position of Earth in the universe at that precise instant. Miss it by just a fraction of a second, and you won't appear in your dream room. You'll materialize in the frozen void of space. Out there, you die instantly. Your body freezing solid, drifting forever into endless darkness. Let's say your calculations are flawless. What happens to your body? If teleportation breaks you into particles and reassembles you? One misplaced atom, and you become a twisted lump of flesh. If instead your whole body shifts instantly as one, what if there's already something at your destination? 
The result? You and that object fuse together a grotesque horror straight out of a nightmare, and even a tiny miscalculation could drop you high in the sky, kilometers above the ground. Up there, the air is too thin to breathe. The temperature is brutal, cosmic radiation relentless. You'd suffocate, burn, or plummet at hundreds of kilometers per hour. One single glitch in teleportation is all it takes to end you. But even if everything works perfectly, teleportation still steals something precious. The journey. No more anticipation before a trip. No more memories of winding roads, rest stops, or chance encounters. All that remains is emptiness, the hollow feeling of appearing at the destination without ever truly going there. Teleportation sounds like a divine gift, mastery of space, freedom from every limit. But look closer, and it could shatter your body, erase your mind, and strip away the little wonders of living. Because the true value isn't in how fast we arrive, but in the journey itself where we live, feel, and connect with every fleeting moment. Imagine, a mysterious stranger appears before you and offers two choices. One, you die within a year. Two, you become immortal, nothing can kill you. Sounds like an easy choice, right? Who wouldn't want to live forever? Who wouldn't want to be the immortal protagonist watching the world change around them? But, if you truly possessed immortality, it might not be a gift. It could be the heaviest sentence a human could ever bear. In the first few decades, immortality would feel like paradise. You'd travel everywhere, learn everything, try every experience without fearing death, but then, those you love begin to leave, one by one. Friends age, children and grandchildren grow old, while you remain unchanged. You'll attend funeral after funeral, watching everyone you care about vanish from the world while you're left behind, alone. Gradually, you stop forming attachments, because you know sooner or later you will have to say goodbye again, and you will still remain. As time passes, you outlive entire civilizations. You'll witness nations collapse, empires dissolve, languages shift, histories rewritten. One day, humanity itself may disappear, and you'll still stand in anachronism amid the ruins of once great cultures. And when Earth becomes uninhabitable, when oceans dry up and the sky darkens as the sun dies, you will still be alive. When the sun explodes and Earth is destroyed, You'll drift through infinite space, no air to breathe, yet you do not die, no light to guide you, yet you do not lose sight. You will float alone through endless darkness, hearing your own heart beat in the silence of the cosmos. Immortality ceases to be life and becomes eternal imprisonment. Perhaps death is what makes life valuable, because we know our time is limited. If life had no ending, Maybe it would never truly mean anything. Imagine, with just a snap of your fingers, the entire world freezes. People turn motionless, raindrops stop midair, a speeding bullet halts right before your eyes. You could do anything, cheat in an exam, steal from a bank, escape a deadly accident, or wander in a world where only you are moving. When you freeze time, have you thought about the air around you? Oxygen, nitrogen, the very molecules you breathe, also become frozen. The result? You can't take in a single breath. Within seconds, your lungs will scream for air. Light itself, streams of photons, also stop when time stops. That means your eyes receive nothing. The entire world plunges into absolute darkness. No frozen people, no suspended raindrops, only a void of endless black, as if you've been thrown into a room with no way out. Suppose you could still move, how would you touch another person? A human body frozen in time becomes rigid as stone. Moving them would be like trying to push a statue weighing tons. And if you use force, their body could shatter like fragile crystal. One gentle touch could turn someone you love into a horrific disaster. Time is frozen, yet your mind still works. Imagine living hours, days, 
even years in a motionless world. No voices, no movement, no change. Only heavy silence and soulless statues surrounding you. Time, not your ally, but your enemy. Time defines life itself. It gives us a heartbeat, day and night, seasons, growth, and even death. Stop it, and you no longer live in the human world. You've cut yourself off, drifting as a lost soul in a dead universe, where nothing ever changes. Perhaps we don't need to stop time to master life. What we truly need is to cherish every second as it flows. Because it's fleeting, every moment becomes priceless. Imagine this. You open a door, the handle crumbles. You lift a cup of coffee, it shatters in your hand. You hug a loved one and accidentally break their bones. Super strength sounds cool, but in reality, it's a nightmare. Everything around us is built for normal humans. With super strength, you turn into a destroyer chairs, faucets, even keyboards break under your touch. Strength doesn't mean invincibility. Punch a wall, and while the wall cracks, the recoil crushes your own hand. Try lifting a car? Your knees and spine snap first. The psychological cost, living in fear of hurting others. Afraid to touch, afraid to play. Slowly, you isolate yourself. Power without control is nothing but disaster. What's truly admirable isn't raw muscle, but the ability to master yourself. You see, behind every perfect superpower hides deadly traps. Maybe humans don't need invisibility, immortality, or super strength to be special. What truly makes us powerful is learning to cherish every moment, every limit, and every bond we already have. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you won't miss the next one. And tell me if you could choose one superpower, which one would it be? Leave your answer in the comments below.